There she is. Every single part that I need is on it. The only thing I need now is the cylinder heads and I can bolt it up. Once I get that, the cylinder heads on here and I get this bolted down, I can run the fuel lines and then I can go ahead and pressurize it and test to make sure all the fittings are there. But there's the fuel pressure regulator. And there's that. So. It is important to note, Ken ships the intake manifold loose, so before you put this together, there is a two of these gaskets in the kit. The first one goes here between the throttle body and that, and the second one goes here. You'll also notice here that there is an adjustment for your throttle and TV cables, which is your automatic transmission, so you will be able to adjust it. There's also, on this plate here, there's two different size screws. You'll see it when you take it out. Just remember that the short screws go to the front. And, like I said, you do have to put these gaskets in. Not a big deal. He ships them loose, so... I just wanted to kind of point that out to you if you're getting one of these intake manifolds. Like I said, it's not a big deal. It's four screws here. This throttle body comes right off. You just uh, have to hook the spring back up. And then four here. Just remember to put those gaskets in. You'll be all right. Look at that thing. Oh, what a gorgeous piece of work. Also, like I said, I wanted to point out too that there is adjustment in this plate right here too. So if your cables don't line up for whatever reason, you can loosen this and manipulate this plate to fine tune what you need. I almost forgot, Ken recommends getting some of these long ball head um, Allen sockets. These are definitely a must for getting into those hard to reach bolts around the uh, intake manifold. Not so much for here, but I already had them out, so just wanted to point it out too. I can pick these up at Harbor Freight. All right. So there you have it. Just wanted to make sure to remind you of that. Ooh, my dad saw me touching electronics without being grounded. He would freak out. So make sure, touch some metal, do whatever. Make sure you're not having no static charges. Oh, this whole car has been <laughs> a learning thing for me. Um, the burner, the tuner gave me, is for this chip right here. These chips lock in. And I couldn't figure out how do you get this thing in here. What, what I didn't realize too is he sent me an adapter that snaps onto this piece and it comes with these kind of feet. And then you just take the entirety of your EEPROM, this thing, and put it in the burner. And, and just this piece here overhang. And, oh man, like a big kid. I don't know why, I just felt like prying this EEPROM out of here, which was dumb. And uh, now I found out I put it in the wrong way. I should have known better. My dad was an electrical engineer and we used to play with these things as kids. Oh lordy, look at this. These things are so, they're so delicate. Oh. So there we go. See, I kind of bent that one leg up there just a little bit. Yeah, I had to email my tuner and ask him what's the right way um, right here on the chip let me see if I can see that if you can see here on the EEPROM there's a small little part round piece on that end and not on that so this round piece needs to point out uh, I don't know why I had to play with this thing uh, so this is just very, very delicate, making sure that all these little pins get into these holes here. Oh wow, I think I actually... No, maybe not. Key is to get this thing straight. Uh, it's it's kind of in there, but before I go ahead and smash it all the way down, I'll make sure that each one of these tiny little feet's in the proper hole. Here, I'm going to use my big light, which is kind of out of the camera range, but... Alright, there we go. I think we got it now. Alright, 
So moral of the story is, uh, if you have one of these bigger chips, it'll come with an adapter down here that will fit into the burner. Don't do like me and play and pull this thing up. Especially if you end up damaging one of these feet, then you're gonna end up having to buy another chip and wait. So anyhow, if you wanna see the inside of what, like a 91, 92, or I'm not sure what year it went to this style. To be honest with you, I'm, I'm assuming maybe when they went to speed density, because the speed density I think needs more uh, computer processing, that they went to these. As you can see, there's a couple, looks like two smaller EEPROMs here in the bottom. Then you get this little printed circuit board. And there we go. And then you get this protective cover like that. Now this just snaps into our computer. So this will only go in one way. You can see there's some raised pieces right here. There's one more here. And it matches right in here. This blue thing. So they are actually make sure you got these white levers here. They need to be out. And then this thing just simply pushes in there. Oh, okay, one's white, one's blue. But yeah, I'm just push that in there, hear that click, and it's in there. Now this chip is programmed for the anticipated changes of camshaft intake fuel injectors. It's going to have the cooling fans come on, and it's going to allow me a little more slip on the torque converter. And uh, then we're going to do some data logging if we need to make changes. I can flash a new program in there. So until we're a hundred percent, I'm going to leave it like that. But this is a the ECM, and it goes up here on the passenger side kick panel. But I'm just going to go ahead and screw this, put this off for now, just to keep it from walking around, keep stuff from getting in there. Oh, never mind. It's these two little screws. Yeah, so for now, I'm not going to bother trying to go ahead and put that whole ECM up. It's not worth the hassle. I'm just going to have to pop that chip back out and flash a new program. But there we go. I feel so let down right now. Uh, the GoPro here. I used it to record me replacing this crazy contraption and then when I shut it off it said file broken corrupt something like that and it said fixing file so I pulled the memory card put it in the laptop and it wasn't there so <laughs> this crazy looking contraption is actually the horn buttons for the Camaro ever since I've had this car I've had the hardest time pushing the horn like really and now I know why, because that one there was totally broke. This one, the other piece came off. There was a spring in there, and it shot out. So I don't know what happened here, why that was missing. But basically, let me get a light. <laughs> oh, wow, this is such a letdown. I really, man, if anybody knows where I can get a brand new steering wheel, I would buy it in a harpy and even an airbag because this it's really common for these to open up but this leather has definitely seen better days but <laughs> i have a, a i've been watching on ebay for one but anyhow there's four torque screws in the back side of the steering wheel one two three four and the airbag comes right out and these horn switches are basically right here they're like right behind here and they're really easy you just pull them out of the steering wheel pop pop there was one screw that was approximately here in the back half of the steering wheel and then ah this red wire went straight into a thing and I really hate that I lost that footage ah it sucks I hate this I'm not gonna say I hate but I really I really wish the steering wheel was in better shape other than that I mean the rest of the car still I still need to finish cleaning the rest of the car but uh, but it's not in as bad a shape as it can be. 
Oh, man. I cannot believe that. This little session has never let me down at all. You know what? I think I'm going to save that. That's actually some good wires. Because look at that. That's even pre-made up with a ground. You never know when you can use just like a little splinter wire. My other 90 degree came so now I can kind of get a fitting for where the fuel lines are going to go. I'm still missing the piece that will go into the factory fuel lines. They thread it in and they're straight. But for right now, I can get a feeling for how this is going to work. So this is going to be my return right here. And we're going to come straight to there. Right? Like that. So that means I'm only going to have like this much fuel line left. And I'll be able to go from here. So I'm thinking of putting the fitting on there and going from here. So that's going to work like that. I'm thinking. Because that should be a nice easy bend. Like that. And then that should sit in there nicely. Stay out of my engine. Don't scratch my cylinders. This one here is going to be... Um, what I'm thinking about doing on this one actually is just taking this whole hose off right here. Let me stand over here because I'm not really quite sure what this is. thing about taking this, the flex hose off right here, putting the fitting in right here, and then just routing this directly. I think that's going to be like magnificent. That's going to be beautiful right there. I thought about doing this, but then it's going to be too much of a sharp angle to get back up here into the regulator. So, like I said, that'll work. I'm just going to need a piece. I'm just going to have to go buy the auto parts store and buy one more piece of this hose. It's going to be about like that long. And I will be set. That'll look perfect. I have one piece here, an older piece. Not going to quite cut it for anything that I'm doing, but... Yeah, so this stuff is very expensive. This is why I only got, I think, and this was what? Was it seven dollars a? No, nah, it couldn't have been five dollars a foot, maybe. I can't remember. But this is fuel injection hose. It's high pressure hose, so this is extremely expensive. So yeah, I will just need a piece to go from there to there, and we'll be good. Matter of fact, let's measure that. All right, I'll need two feet of hose. That'll work. Let me make sure I'm gonna have enough clamps. I'm gonna need one, two, three, four, five, six hose clamps. Four, five. Alright, got enough hose clamps. And here's uh, the vacuum line I picked up the other day like I had mentioned. I never showed me going into the store, but what I did is I picked up this vacuum line. And I picked up uh, these other four clamps because I knew I'd be short. So we got the vacuum line, we got the clamps. Now we can work on the power steering. So I've been wanting to do this too. Right, that should be good. I mean, it's a vacuum line, so it's not like it's going to blow off. It's inhaling. This one is reserved for the fuel pressure regulator, and then this one goes to the car to work the AC stuff. I got my intake air temperature sensor in. Here's for the power brakes. My throttle position sensor's in there and set. Oh, I just need to put in my idle air control valve. I've been waiting. Something I want to talk about with that. This is supposed to go to the PCV valve and like the breather for, for the thing and I'm not doing either so I plugged those up. Yeah buddy man, 
It's coming along. Ken sending me the uh, pin for that because uh, he's gonna just ship the uh, uh, heads direct for the manufacturer. He's gonna just have that shipped. So, all right, it's all coming together so beautifully. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. I know I'm going a little bit in-depth onto the ins and outs of the first TPI intake. Hopefully you find it entertaining. I'm really trying to put out content that's entertaining and educational at the same time. Because when I was looking for parts for this car and I found this intake, I found a few write-ups on the third gen forms, but I haven't found any videos. It might be out there, but I really haven't found anything that explains a lot of detail thing. And I'm trying to help other people out that maybe have a third gen and they're looking to go this route like the adjustment for the uh, TPS sensor. I had no idea. I had no idea that that bracket adjusted for the throttle cables. So I'm trying to share with everybody what I'm learning and trying to make entertainment value at the same time. You know, I've also had people make comments to me that they like the way that I teach and, and kind of share the stuff with them. So I'm, I'm trying to, you know, give people the confidence and stuff to do the uh, work on their own car, you know, because it, it's something that you should it it comes in handy, especially you know if something happens and you don't get taken advantage of when you know if you have to have somebody work on it. So that being said, it's time to wrap it up. The good thing with the build is I'm really kind of ahead on my videos. I got more videos than I have. Well, I have videos in line on the computer. I already have some videos made and they're waiting to be posted. I'm still just keeping with my Monday, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, so I don't run out of stuff. I really wish I could show you the Camaro right now. I'm telling you, I really wish I could show you. I'm going to tell you, she's on the ground. Um, yeah, I'm going to leave everything. All four tires are on the ground as of right now. She's not on the uh, jack stands where she's been for probably about two months. And you're just going to have to subscribe, hit that bell notification, and you're going to want to make sure you stay tuned. So we get this thing finished up because man tell you what I'm, I'm pretty happy right now i'm pretty stoked so a lot of a lot more stuff still coming like i said this video was a little bit more kind of tutorial stuff i had the stuff and i really just felt it was kind of good i didn't think this video would be that long but i felt it was good information to pass along so hopefully you did enjoy it like i said oh man we got some really good stuff coming up so like shares comments links down below if you need to buy merchandise to support the channel in any way shape or form and as always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.